good morning friends it's Erica from Erica and her mom um, it is Sunday morning and we are already getting started on projects at the house. Uh, my mom is at her house I think she's working on her bushes in her front yard but I wanted to show you what I was doing and give you um, an easy way to paint your front door um, as I talked previously we have repainted the house um, and this shutter color is a really dark navy blue um, and our front door is bright red so we are going to change that and the secret I have for painting the door is get your husband to do it so I'm going to explain what he's doing inside and I'll be doing um, short clips getting you guys updated so this is our front door it's bright red and uh, Jeremy actually had a great idea of putting a drop cloth down to paint. I was just looking for newspapers. Um, that's why he's in charge of this project. But what he's going to do is take all the hardware off and make sure the door is cleaned down. He's then going to take a uh, half inch angle brush and a two inch roller. He'll get started on the recessed corners. Um, of the paneling and then he's going to be doing um, this section so we're doing a dark blue he might have to put two coats on we'll show you what's so up this next is my husband Jeremy say hi hi so he is taking off all the hardware first um, off the door uh, we're not going to be painting the inside because I'm going to leave that white it matches the decor but we are going to just paint the outside he has a nice thick drop cloth down and then his plating clothes on so as I told you guys, the easiest way to paint a door is to have your husband do it. This is my husband, Jeremy. Can I put you on YouTube, babe? Sure. Okay. So he is taking all the hardware off the door. Um, he is not going to be painting the inside of the door. We're going to leave that white because it matches the inside of the house. Um, but he did take the handle off and he is going to take the little peephole off. Um, and then wipe the door down. See, I can't do that. My arms aren't long enough to reach around the door. Ta-da! Great job, babe. So what are you going to do next? Uh, next, I am going to put some painter's tape on the windows so I don't have to clean them up. Oh, that's a great I'm idea. Done. Uh, I'll probably clean out this area before I get started. Wipe down the door so the paint sticks better. That's about it. Thanks, Ben. Hey, babe, what is the difference between painter's tape and like masking tape, scotch tape, the other tape that people use uh, for painting? Masking tape. Like that stuff that looks like a manila folder? Yeah, yeah, that one. Um, I think it's just the amount of stickiness on it. This is like the newer version of masking tape. People used to use that to mask off. Um, but it's a little more sticky, so when you pull it off, you know, it's, this Why is... Why can't you just use regular clear tape? <laughs> like you do for presents. Um, that stuff's way too sticky like it'll leave marks on the glass and stuff okay what are you doing babe uh, i'm covering up the metal on the hinges um some people don't bother doing this stuff because you can like scrape it off afterwards but like I just think just doing it this way is better. You don't get it on there to begin with, and then you don't wind up with any kind of accidental scratches or things like that. Oh, I see. It, it was painted mm. over there. Yeah, I already scraped some old paint off of this before I started, so I don't want to put any new paint on it. Oh, good to know. Perfect. So Jeremy got the door all ready to paint. <laughs> and beautiful thank you a lot more than i would have done and he got his paint what color is it it's 
called uh, Anchors Away. It's from Sherman Williams. Awesome. It's a really, really dark navy blue. And I need a paint stirrer. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> <laughs> okay. Can you use a stick from outside? Um, maybe. Let me see what I can find. Okay. So this is where the project is getting real. Yep. Um, so I could not find a paint stirrer. So I went out in the backyard and I got a petiole off of a palm frond. <laughs> and I broke this end off. The important thing with paint is that you don't get a bunch of extra junk in there. So I kind of wiped it off and picked all the little loose pieces off of it. So it should be, should be good <laughs> as a paint stirrer. So just to let everybody know, this is usually how most of our projects go. We get halfway through, we don't have something, and uh, we improvise looking for something else that um, is disposable. So Jeremy is going to uh, mix the paint. Why are you mixing the paint, Big? Uh, because the paint separates, and if you don't mix the paint, you'll get uh, some of the like, I don't know, the oils or whatever, um, and paint color will be inconsistent. Can't you just shake it really hard? Um, no, you need like. Oh. The store to shake it that far. Oh, okay, all right, good deal. Ooh, so this is a really cool brush we use for painting. Um, it's like a bigger brush, but the handle is super short and it's at an angle, which makes it a lot easier to control. Um, I think it was like seven dollars at Lowe's, but it has been worth every penny. And the bristles are super easy. Okay. I think that's gonna look great. I love that color. You are like limited on your paint. Uh, that has the color, it's a good idea to primer the whole thing first, especially with a dark color like red. Um, but we have almost the whole gallon left over after we did the outside, so I'm just going to double coat it with this. But it's because it's a darker color too, like, and it's covering a dark red or a bright red that it's probably not going to come through with a couple coats. Right. Awesome! Can't wait to see the finished product! So you painted in the recess and now you're going over it? I'm just going over the flat parts with the roller brush to kind of smooth it out so you don't have all those paint, um, you know, those paint marks on it. Don't you love spending quality time together, babe? It's wonderful. <laughs> so Jeremy finished the recess sections of the door and now he's painting with the brush. Um, the flat parts uh, for the first coat. And I take it we did not have to take the old paint off. <laughs> no, um, like I said earlier you could put a primer coat on it if you were concerned about like saving your colored paint. Oh. It would have probably covered that red and we wouldn't have to do two coats. But then you would be doing two coats because you'd be doing the primer coat also. And so if you have to, I'm trying to think of really good questions people might want to know. Um, would you have to do any repairs to the door beforehand? Um, 
you could um, like you could fill in some of the, the holes and things with putty, but some of these holes I'm just gonna put the nails right back in it so we can hang stuff on the door. Um, this particular door has some kind of extra damage to it <laughs> that um, you could cover that in. But I don't want to because I will tell you a very funny story <laughs> if I can get around Jeremy. So see these big gash lines in the door? Um, so this uh, front door used to have one big piece and when I was a teenager, um, my brother and I were left home alone and we kept hearing something at the front door so we weren't allowed to open the door of course when your parents aren't home. However, we look through the peephole and there is this giant St. Bernard outside. No joke. My mom still does not believe this story to this day. So we go to open the door and the St. Bernard jumps up on the glass and the glass falls over us and scratches the door and the dog jumps on top of the glass runs into the house, runs on my dad's side of the bed, so there's this huge St. Bernard, we're freaking out. There's no cell phones. Um, and we ended up having to use the whole pack of bologna to entice the dog to get out of the house. So when my parents came home, they were livid that there was a big gash on the door and we kept telling them the same story over and over and they still don't believe us to this day that it was a giant St. Bernard in Florida that made the gash in the door and that's why all the baloney was gone. Jeremy has finished the first coat on the door. So how long are you gonna let that sit before the second coat? About an hour. Okay. So. Um, you don't want your paintbrushes to dry out while you're waiting to do the second coat. So I just put them in a plastic bag. As long as you kind of get rid of all the air, it'll stay fresh. Um, if you're going to do it overnight, you need to stick them in the refrigerator, not the freezer. Oh. Um, put them in the refrigerator and it'll, it'll stay basically tacky and, you know, like paint. Um, Why not the freezer? Um, if you put it in the freezer, then it can affect the paint. Oh. Um, okay. You know, and then you also have to wait for it to thaw out before <laughs> you can use them again. So it's not very immediate. But with something like this, just for an hour, I'm just going to put them in the plastic bag. I'm not going to worry about that. Sounds great. Hey friends, here is the finished product. Jeremy went ahead and did the second coat. It looks fantastic. Um, couldn't be happier with it. Now, I just wanted to let you guys know this whole project took about five hours to complete, um, which is a little bit longer than we thought, but I am really glad that I had Jeremy do it because he's a little more meticulous than I am. I'm gonna zoom in so you can see. It's not black, but it's pretty, um, pretty blue and um, it's exactly what I wanted to see um, for a front door. So if you guys have any questions or any tips that might help this go a little bit better or quicker or know something that we didn't do, um, please comment. Again, you know, we always wanna do different projects and don't always know the best thing to do, especially when you don't have a paintster. Um, make sure you guys like and subscribe. We have more fun stuff coming up shortly. I'll talk to you guys later. Cheers.